This is the Sugar Beet Report, bringing you the latest information from NDSU throughout the sugar beet growing season. Pre-pile for sugar beet has begun in some parts of the valley. Right after harvest is the best time to conduct soil sampling, according to Dave Franzen, NDSU Extension Soil Science Specialist. Dave, why is soil testing important at this time of the year? Yeah, so for the next month or so, the small grains are going to come off the field. There'll be some sugar beet fields that'll come off. And I like to see the field sampled as soon as the combine comes across. Not that the nitrate might move a little bit in the value as you go through the fall, but unless there's volunteers growing, unless there's a lot of growth of some kind, it really doesn't change that much. In order to get a very good 0 to 6 inch sample, you want to get the soil samples taken before chisel plow goes out there. And as soon as that happens, then you push the probe in the ground, whether it's manual or whether it's usually something out of a pickup truck, and it it pushes the soil out to the side. And so a lot of times you're just sampling subsoil instead of topsoil. So if you go out there right after the combine, you know you're going to get a 0 to 6 inch core. If that's what you're taking, you get a 0 to 6. So I'd really strongly urge people to do that. What is the preferred soil sampling method? I think most of the people taking soil samples understand that the zone method of taking the samples is really the way to go. Uh, You make a zone map using a couple different tools, an aerial image or a satellite image, soil EC detector, EM detector, multi-year yield maps, topography, if you can get somebody to do that in a nice manner. So you meld at least two of those together and you come up with a zone map. You check out with the farmer and and ask them if that looks like their field. Most of the time they're going to say yes. Maybe they'll tweak it a little bit. And then you go out and take a sample, usually somewhere around 10, 15 cores within the zone. And then that zone sample is what you send to the lab and they send you back a map. How big is a zone? The question is how many zones you have in the field. So let's say a quarter I think a minimum number of zones would be, say, three, that maybe if you had the higher elevations or the bumps on the landscape, not necessarily higher higher elevation, elevation and, and landscape structure are two completely different things. So three probably minimum, and I've heard of, I think, something like 10 is overkill. So usually you're going to get somewhere around three to six zones in a field, and that's plenty. What is the benefit of zone sampling? Yeah, so a zone sampling gives you as much information as if you went out there and you grid sampled it at a sample an acre, which is really expensive (laughs) to do it even to a two-foot depth. You can imagine doing three to five cores every acre throughout a 160-acre field, and then the next day you do another field (laughs) where a zone sampled field, you could do several in a day. I'm sure you could. But to do a sample and acre grid, forget it. But you get the same information from a zone sampled field you get with a sample and acre. Dave, is there anything else you'd like to share? This last winter, we had a winter where the soil didn't freeze. And so the ammonia changed the nitrate all through the winter at a very slow rate. And then when spring came and the water ran over the road and ran across the field and flooded certain areas, it turns out that the beets in that area and any crop that were in those areas in the eastern part of the state here in the beet growing areas, it was really deficient in nitrogen. The denitrification was horrible. So just a reminder that for at least 40 years, the recommendations at NDSU have been that fall nitrogen application is not recommended on fields that frequently flood or fields that have a problem with leaching. Thanks, Dave. Our guest has been Dave Franzen, NDSU Extension Soil Science Specialist. This has been the Sugar Beet Report, bringing you the latest information from NDSU throughout the sugar beet growing season.